Hello, Microsoft Build. All right, so we're here to solve one of your biggest problems. All right, for the last year, you've been asking us the exact same question, which is, how do I run AI models locally on my device, especially smaller AI models rather than GPT something, 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 right? So we decided to pull John Lamb, one of the smartest people you've ever met in your life, to come and explain things to us because he and his team have been working on an amazing new product. Yeah, this yeah. is the uh, the AI toolkit for VS Code. Okay. And uh, you know what we've been doing is trying to solve the kind of three big problems that people have, which yeah. is these small language models. I want to go get them and download them locally to yes. my machine. I need to be able to evaluate them to see whether or not this change that I made to my software made things better or worse. Yes. And then finally, this fine tuning thing. Yes. Right. Fine tuning is how I can kind of further train the model to do yes. a task that I want the model to do, right. not what the model wants to do. That's exactly it. You want to layer on your own data, and you also want to run it locally on your machine, offline capable. Yes, exactly. Especially on those shiny new Windows devices, OK? I'm very interested in this whole thing, because this unlocks so many scenarios for all of these different kinds of organizations, right? right. So think government, education. So many companies have these offline scenarios. I didn't understand how important this topic was going to be when we first started this whole era of AI. So I was so excited to hear that you and your team have been working on this. Yeah. So this is really cool. Yeah, this is really, do you want to see? I want to see it. I awesome. want to see it. OK. I want to see it too. So um, this is the AI toolkit in VS Code. Um, and what you're looking at here is a, uh, Essentially, it's a catalog of a bunch of curated small language models that yeah. we have. And what the toolkit, one of the key features of the toolkit is allowing you to go and download and test locally a small language model, whatever it is, is that you want. So what I'm going to show you is, uh, let's take a look at this Fee3 mini model, okay. which is the smallest of the Fee3 family of models um, that we downloaded. It just came out last it, month. It just recently. came out a couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, yeah. And okay. we released the... Two, two larger variants mm -hmm. of it um, yesterday, and the Vision one. Uh, really? Well. We released yes. a Fee3 Vision model yes. yesterday? Look at the announcements I miss while I'm here on <laughs> the build stage. You're trapped here. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, so, so why don't we uh, take a look at the simple prompt here. I, this is my hello world joke uh, thing that I like to say, which is tell me a dad joke. And then I have to also have to tell it, don't explain it. Oops. Has Seth been here? There's more dad jokes in this demo. OK. So. You can see that, you know, the reason why I need to do this is it likes to explain it, and it's really trying hard not to explain it, oh my gosh. right, so the dad is strong yes. in this model. Wow. Um, but the cool thing about this was this all ran locally. It ran using yes. the GPU that's in this laptop. Yes. And, and it uh, was fast. And it was fast. It didn't think about its existence for five minutes <laughs> exactly. before giving you exactly. an answer. It just yes. gave you an answer. Right, like, so, huh, so I super like that. small. And, but the thing that's really cool about the V3 mini model is how trainable it is. Right, so this, this process of saying, okay, well, there's like this base model is trained on a lot of interesting yes. curated data that they have, but I have a specific task. Yes. So let me show you this, um, this thing here. So this is a, a website called the, the Mountains Concierge. This is our eShop demo in .NET. So okay. we yep. show this a lot. Yep. And one of the things that I've noticed is that the model um, is not that good at answering subtly off-topic questions, mm -hmm. right? So this one, I'm asking it for an invisible jacket, yes. right? So I'm pretty sure that this jacket is not actually invisible. Unless but you're Wonder Woman. It, it, it that might be. be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, all right, okay. But it was only her jet that okay. was invisible, oh, yeah, right? Like she, her mind. clothes were mm -hmm. still, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the great thing about this is we can take some additional data and we can fine tune this thing. So, so I created this data set I um, about 2,300 questions and answers mm -hmm. uh, for uh, against this catalog. And I use that data set, which also had some off-topic questions as well, like invisible and other things, mm -hmm. um, to train the model saying, OK, when you predict the category of the product, make sure you predict none if it's an off-topic one. Right? So, so that, that's how this all works. OK, OK, OK. So, so I'm going to show you just like some results yeah. um, for this. And uh, so I'm using Azure AI Studio to, to view the results yeah. here. And this was the performance of the original V3 mini model at predicting the, um, the category. It was 14% okay. accurate. Now, 14% oh. yeah. that, that's not as bad as it yes. seems, right, right? Because no, no. it wasn't trained yes. on the product catalog data, and right. it wasn't trained on questions about right. products. So that's just like raw V3 out of the box. Exactly. That's what you get. Raw not V3. the worst. Not the exactly. worst. Okay. Got but you. after yeah. training it with my, my, my data set of 2,300 questions and answers, I was able to get the performance of this thing up to 91%. What? Yeah. 
So 91% accuracy for predicting the product categories, and now it's gonna to refuse to answer questions like this. Now, yeah. the original version, the version of the, um, the, the app that produced that, that wrong answer was running against GPT-3.5 Turbo, yes. which in fairness wasn't fine-tuned on this fair, data fair, either, yeah. but it was only 45% accurate. That is fascinating. Yeah. So I was able to get a small language model, yes. which can now run locally yes. with lower latency. I don't have to make another round trip call to a service to go do okay, this wait, stuff. Wait, wait. So this small language model, fine tune locally, performs better than a large language model on this very specific, slightly, task. slightly tricky task. Yes. Okay, John Lamb, I run a fashion company. This is very important information for me, <laughs> please. <laughs> don't, don't answer. <laughs> I know, this is very important information because this is the number one issue. It's like, hey, it's a slightly tricky ask and we're getting back responses that are really not accurate 50% of the time. Right. Right, and yeah. that is such a question from customers as well. So you're actually solving two of my issues. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to see it answer the question? Absolutely, right. I want so, to see it. Yeah. So this is a live code running right now. Okay. And uh, so we can ask you the question. You know, what's a good invisible jacket jacket uh -huh. for trekking? And then boom, refuses to answer Ooh, the question. Okay. It's a little bit worried, yes. but we can fix that. Okay. Um, but then. Just so you know that we're yeah. just not, you know, refusing uh -huh. to answer all the yeah, questions. Yeah. We can say, what's a good jacket for skiing? Okay. And then returns an answer. Whoa, so, okay. So this, like is a, this is a great example of a task yes. that people really want, right? Like, yes. you know, there was that meme a little while ago, yes. remember? There was, there was a car dealership, they had JATGBD in it, yes. and some, some kid asked it to do its physics homework, yes. and the and I just said, hey, happily. here's the answer. Yes, but yeah. also, remember the guy who negotiated that Chevy for like $1 or something? Yeah, that, that one yeah, too. That was, yes. We have so many cases of this out there, and it makes companies nervous. Yes. They're saying, we, we don't mind if our customers don't get an answer and call an agent, but we don't want them to get a wrong answer, because that is brand disruption, yes. right? That, yes. that really destroyed like brand value, brand equity, et cetera, et cetera. And I love this, where it's like, nope, not answering that question, deflect. And you can even point to a help site at this point, right? right? Like CRFAQ, call somebody, yes. et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. I love that. And... You can cite sources. There's so many use cases. Now I'm just like enthusiastically arm waving because this is just cool. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. So yeah. this is the AI toolkit for VS Code. Okay. It's available now. Yes. Um, so you can go, uh, there, there, will be a, there yeah. will be a link in the description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, okay. Uh, so what do you want people to do? What are the three steps that you want people to do? I know you said yeah. so at the beginning, but we want to hear it louder for everybody make sure that they <laughs> in, remember. In the back of the room. In the back of the room. Let's, so, yeah. so remember, the, the three things that it helps you with is okay. there's that playground experience yes. that we saw with the That's dad right. jokes and mm -hmm. stuff, right? So this allows you to try different models and just prompt them and experiment yes. with them. Yes. Even if you're not a dev, even if you think your air quotes not technical, go mess around with the playground because it'll give you a much better idea of what AI models are like. Move the temperature all the way up to get more creative answers, download to get less creative answers, and just kind of play with the different settings to get a different idea. I tell everyone to do that. But then the second step is, is a little more technical and fun. Exactly, right? So, so evaluations are just such a key part of yeah. um, the experience. And making sure that you run and design evaluations to measure whether or not things are getting better or worse. Right. We're really just getting started on that feature. There's a lot more to come on evaluations. Um, but that's, that's something that I want people to kind of take home and just really think about is how do I measure quantitatively and qualitatively whether or not the, um, the AI is doing the task that I want it to that's do. That's right. And then the third thing is this fine-tuning thing. Yes. And fine-tuning um, in AI Toolkit, we have local fine-tuning. So if you have a local NVIDIA GPU, you're yeah. going to be able to do the same fine-tuning thing that I did. Yeah. Um, we have in private preview, fine-tuning on Azure Container Apps. Oh. Right? So you can use bigger GPUs and you can stuff into a laptop. I like that. Um, to fine-tune faster mm -hmm. um, than you otherwise could. And uh, that's in private preview. So again, at the, at the AK link, you can, yeah. you can sign up for that. Um, and so those are kind of the three things, right, yes. that, that, I, that I love people to go try out. Perfect. And, 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 let and us know. all of this can be found on our call to action, which is going to be down here somewhere called aka.ms AI Toolkit. Yep. aka.ms slash AI Toolkit. Yep. So all of you check this out because any of you who've asked this question this year, which is, how do I use smaller language models that are, you know, less expensive? How do I run models locally on my machine, which I think is a magical experience? And three, how do I get more accurate results with fine tuning that I have more control over? Yes. Amazing. Yes.
Thank you so much for You're being here so and welcome. sharing this with us. Thanks for having me. This has been spectacular, John. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome, John. Everyone, go forth, do the thing. Thank you.